Good morning, church. Good morning, church. <laughs> Such a privilege and honor to be here uh, with you. Thank you, Pastor Norma. I know Pastor Phil is preaching at one of the other campuses. Isn't it great that the God that is here in Cranbourne is the same God in Lilydale and Frankston and New Zealand and Samoa and Tonga and Ireland and England and Scotland and America? Amen. It's the same God, the same God of 2,000 years ago is the same God here today. The God that was before the creation of the world is the same God who lives in you and I. That's good news. It's the same God where there is only one God and he is the same yesterday, today and forever. It's such a privilege and honor to be with you. I love it when people gather together to hear what God wants to say. Does anyone here want to hear what God wants to say today? And uh, it's such a privilege and honor for my wonderful wife. Sally and I to be here. I honor Sally. This God graces us with certain people in our lives that really do reveal what God is like really well. And they're the people that God really wants us to walk with towards God. And I just want to honor you, Sal. Uh, you really represent God so well to me. Your life is one of integrity and, and purity and honesty. You reveal God. And so I just want to honor my wife today. And I want to get right into the Word, and I just want you to feel free to relax and preach with me. Is that all right? Feel free to relax and preach with me. Uh, the calling and gifting grace on uh, my life is that of a prophet, and I don't say that lightly. It's, it's something that um, God called me into, the fivefold according to Ephesians, the apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher. It's not something you appoint yourself to. But God appoints you as, as confirmed by others. And the greatest thing I, I want to do is empower you, equip you to hear from God for yourself. The greatest thing is not that you hear me tell you what God says, but that you actually hear what God says to you personally. Amen. And, uh, and I've got a very, very clear word that God has given me for the church. But I, I felt the Lord say to me just before, take a couple minutes to talk about the prophetic to equip you to make sure you hear from God this morning. And the prophetic, we need to understand the prophetic is making known the mind, the will, the intention of God. What's on God's heart, that is what the prophetic is. The prophetic is God speaking, not a man speaking, not a woman speaking. Can I hear an amen to that? We're going to make sure we're not looking to people for what God can give. We, we set people up for frustration because they can't supply what we need, but we also live in frustration because we're constantly looking to people. We look to people for, if I can get that person to pray for me, if I can get that person to speak to me, then I'll feel better, then maybe I'll receive my healing. I want to declare that God can use people, but it's never people that heal us or set us free or give us a prophetic word. It is God Almighty. And I believe that God wants to turn our attention back to the one who is speaking, the one who is moving, the one who is doing good things. And so I want to encourage you today, don't look to me, look to God. Because the prophetic is God speaking and us hearing. God's showing us things in the Spirit. Open up our eyes to the things unseen. We just sang that. That's the essence of the prophetic. It's not just hearing what God is saying. It's also seeing in the Spirit. It's easy to see in the natural. It's easy to see what's wrong. But prophetic people go beyond what they see in the natural and say, God, what are you doing? What have you created this person to be? And actually coming into agreement with that and speaking that out. There is life and death in the power of our tongues. Our words are creative. Why? Because we're created in the image of God who is a creator. And when he spoke, there was light. When we prophesy, life happens, not because there's something in our words, but because it comes from the word. Come on. It comes from heaven and it comes through us. And so I want to encourage you today to hear the prophetic word of the Lord. Will anyone uh, shout amen at that. You need to hear the prophetic word of the Lord. In the days that we live in, in 2022, we need to know what God is doing, what God is saying, what God wants to show us. Because the world, there is so much happening. 
and it's all consuming for so many people. It's time for us to what? Lift up our eyes. Come on, lift up your eyes to the hills. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Fix your eyes upon Jesus. What God is doing in this world right now is far greater than what the enemy is doing in the world. But we are giving our attention to what the enemy is doing far too much and it's time for the light to go on and what what is truth and what is life and what is good and that comes from God. The prophetic is God revealing his heart. Amen? Amen. And I want to tell you today before I get into this word, don't miss what God's saying because you're focused on what you want to hear. Many people miss what God is saying because we come expecting God to speak a certain thing or a certain way. Many times we miss the prophetic intention of God because we are, we're just waiting for the, the, the prophet to get past what he's saying and come and give me a word. We miss the word of God because we've made it about us, not about God speaking. We live in a in a, in a world that is saturated with self. And whenever self is the focus, we actually don't hear God. If you look biblically, the prophets spoke more to the churches and the corporate than the individuals. And I think there's something in the heart of God in that. He's saying, come on, it's not just about me hearing something for me. It's God, what are you saying to the churches? Come on, Revelation 2 and 3. Whoever has ears, spiritual ears, hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches, plural. Come on, the gathering together. It was a calling the people back to what God wants to do what God is saying and I I feel by by the spirit of God that he has called me to talk about a return to God's original a return to God's original oh man we're so often saying God what's the new thing you're doing what's the new thing you're saying what's the new thing and is there anything wrong with that no but it's not the greatest thing right now hear me church and I'm speaking to turning point and I'm speaking to the body of Christ the greatest thing is God taking us back to his original intention this is the word of the Lord in 2022 revival is not a new thing it's a return to what has already been authored and established in the eternal realm of God. Can I hear an amen? And I believe that God is glorified. Come on, do it all for the glory of God. God is glorified when we return to His original patterns and His original ways. The world is saturated at the moment and it's become derailed. The church in many places is getting derailed because we're trying to come up with new things. We're trying to come up with new definitions of what God has already decreed. It's not for us to determine what is truth. It's for us to discover what is truth. And truth is what God has declared something to be. Amen. A return to God's original. God is glorified when we return to God's original pattern. Two questions before I get into the main things that I want to say here today. And that is this, what has God said? There's a great question to get up every morning. What has God said? When you get up and look at yourself in the mirror, what has God said? Come on, church. It's time to prophesy to yourself. What has God said? What has God said about your life? What has God said about the church? What has God said about the world? What has God said about grace? What has God said about mercy? What has God said about repentance? We need to know what God has said. Amen. But the second thing is this. What has God declared a thing to be? This is a make or break in our world today. And it's a make or break in the church today. If we're going to glorify God, we are going to live in an alignment and an agreement with what God has said and with what God has declared a thing to be. What has God declared marriage? Come on, church. Can we get real in church right now? What has God declared about sexuality and about gender and about truth and about work and about relationships? What has God declared? Because when we come back to that, I tell you, the Spirit of God moves and people are set free. The Bible says if you know the truth, not your opinion, but the truth, the truth will set you free. 
And God is saying it's time to come back. It's time to return to God's original intention. Can I hear the church shout amen this morning? Hallelujah. Are you, are you, are you receiving the word? I want to talk about two patterns that have been set. Two patterns. Thank you, brother. Uh, you're working me out already. I'm, I'm a bit of a mover. <laughs> I'm a bit of a mover here. There's two patterns that God is saying, I want to bring the church back to right now. And, and I want to tell you, this is all about the glory of God. This is all about the glory of God. God is not glorified when we redefine what He's clearly said. The, the God is not glorified when we come out with something big and new that is contrary to the Word of God. God is glorified when we actually uh, put Him in the rightful place, and that is He is the Creator. Come on. He is the author. He is the beginner, he, b- the one who begins something. He is the one that brings it to completion. He is the one that determines what something is, and God is calling His people back to his original intention. So I want to talk about the pattern that's been set in the beginning, and then I want to talk about the pattern that was set at Pentecost. Any Pentecostals in the house? Come on, don't be ashamed of it. If you want to know the the pattern for the early church, it was Pentecost. Come on. That, that's not me put elevating one denomination. That is just the truth of the Word of God all through there. But I'll get there in a minute. I'll get there in a minute. The pattern set... In the beginning, because God is calling us back. And God gave me three things for that and three things for the pattern set at Pentecost. And I'll just see what I get through. Is that okay? The first thing here, and I'm stirred in my heart right now, that God wants to call us back to. If we're going to glorify God, we need to come back to the pattern set in the beginning. And here's the first thing I see. We were created to be led by a voice. Come on, I want the Word of God to drop into your hearts. We were not created to live under a law. The law came in Exodus 20. Come on, church, I need you to hear me. We want the rules, we want the list of things, and that's, and then we'll live according to that. No, we were created to live being led by a voice. There was no written word. There was no written law. And now God is saying, I want you to get back to being led by my voice. Genesis 2, 16 and 17. Read from the NIV here. It says, And the Lord God commanded the man. The Lord God spoke to the man. You are free. I love the, the, one of the first words we read in the Bible is you are free. I, I never want you to forget the nature of God. He's a God of freedom, not of control. When God speaks and gives instructions, it's not to control people and make them good. It's to keep Free people, free. Come on, church. Galatians 5, 1. It is for freedom. That's why I set you free. And freedom is not doing what you want because you and I can be stupid at times. Can I just hear an amen in church? You and I make dumb decisions. We are led by the flesh and by what we want. And if we we go, I'm free to do what I want. Yeah, and we end up in prison and in slavery. But freedom is actually, I am free from what I don't want. Come on. I'm free from the condemnation and the guilt and the shame and the brokenness. How? Because I actually do what God is saying. And when he speaks, there is freedom in that. And he came and he says, and the Lord God commanded, Genesis 2.16, you are free to eat from any tree in the garden. Look at the extravagant nature of God. People say in the world, oh, God's all, he's stingy and he withholds and he takes away all your fun. Look at what he says. You're free to eat from all of the good things. Come on. we got to understand the nature and character of God. He's a giver, not a taker. God loved the world so much he gave. He gave extravagantly. You're free to eat from any tree in the garden, but you must not eat from one tree. The tree, listen, of the knowledge of good and evil, you got to hear the word of the Lord, church. Is your hearts open? I'm speaking deep things right now. You're only going to get this if you listen with your spirit, not with your head. Don't eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Don't. This is the pattern set in the beginning. Is not you knowing everything that is good and evil. It's you listening to my voice and doing what I say in the moment. Did you hear the profoundness of that? We've got to get away from following rules to following a voice. 
We got to get back to God's original intention because if you eat that one tree, when you eat of it, you will certainly die. This was a voice speaking, not a law given. Are you with me, church? And you go to Genesis chapter 3, verse 1. And now the serpent was more crafty than any of the wild animals the Lord God had made. And he still is very crafty, the devil. And he said to the woman, did God really say, is that really what God said? You must not eat from any tree in the garden. The weapons of the enemy, the schemes of the enemy have not changed. You, you, whew, I pray the Spirit of God is just imparting truth into you right now. Imparting truth into you right now. The devil comes and goes, is that really what God said? Is that really what God meant? On any issue that you can think of. It's a voice issue, not a law issue. And then we know what happened. He listened to a different voice than the voice that she was meant to listen to. And then she looked at the fruit and saw that it looked good. Isn't that one of the curses of the days that we live in? It looks good, therefore I'll have it. Hang on. But what voice is the voice that you're listening to? When you go to do something or touch something or speak something or look at something or whatever it may be, what voice is behind what you're about to do? Because the greatest issue is not what you do, but what voice you're listening to. They, they, she saw that. She listened to the different voice, saw it, partook of it. Their eyes were opened. They saw that they're naked. They tried to sew fig leaves together. together. In other words, they tried to cover up what they had done. Then when they heard the sound of the Lord walking in the garden, which is what he did every day. Well, that's what God intended, to walk with man and women, to walk with us, literally to walk with us and then to speak with us. And we live out of what God says. We don't need a law book, a rule book. We need to be in communion with a voice who's leading us. Amen. And then they hid because now they had actually Stepped into a place of disobedience. And I want you to see this in Genesis 3 verse 11. When God then came, when God came and he called out to Adam and Eve and said, where are you? They said, we hid because we were naked. And listen to please what God said in Genesis 3 verse 11. And God said, who told you? That you were naked. Have you eaten? Oh, this is powerful. Get this. Have you eaten from the tree that I commanded you not to eat from? I tell you what happens in our lives. This is what we do. Why did you eat from the tree? Come on. Why did you lie? Why did you steal? Why did you lust? Why did you cheat? Why did you commit adultery? We go straight to the action as if that's the issue. God started with the issue. Who told you? Come on. Behind every sin, there is a wrong voice that we listen to. This will get you further ahead. Come on. This will advance you in your organization. This will actually help you financially. This will help you relationally. This will help you to feel good. This will actually satisfy you. This will actually give you pleasure. Come on. There's a voice that is behind every temptation. But there is also a voice behind every direction from God. And God is calling the church back to being led by the right voice. Praise God. What voice are you listening to? Number two, we were created to co-labor with God. We were cre created to be led by a voice, and we were created to co-labor with God. I'm preaching strength to my body right now. I tell you right now, the word of God's in your mouth. The anointing flows. We are created to co-labor with God. Ah, this is what God's calling us back to. You want to bring glory to God? Co-labor with God. 
Don't build your own empire. This is not about your job, your vocation. This is not even about your relationships. Please, I'm talking primarily. Those things are important, but that's not what you're created for. You're created to be led by a voice, not to live under a law. Did anyone receive something in that? But you're created to co-labor with God, not just to live a natural life and have a job and go to work. You were created, I was created to co-labor with God. And I love this because this is good news. People take this as a negative. This isn't, just think about this, church. The God who is eternal, who lacks for nothing, says, I'm going to create you. Let's do this together. What an awesome privilege to co-labor with God. Genesis 2 verse 8 says, Now the Lord God had planted a garden. The Lord God planted a garden. Are you got it? Who planted the garden? Who planted the garden? Shout at me. God planted a garden in the east, in Eden, and there he put the man he had formed. In verse 15 of Genesis 2 it says, And the Lord God took the man and he put him in the garden of Eden that he planted, And he put the man in there to work it and to take care of it. This is what God created us to do. Not to build our own thing, to run around and satisfy all our own desires, but to look what God is doing and to actually partner with that. I want to tell you, and I want to speak loudly to the body of Christ right now, we need to ask God to bless what we're doing less and look at what he is doing because it's already blessed. If we partner with what God is doing, we don't have to ask God to bless it because it's already blessed. God took the man and he put him in the garden. I want to tell you, whatever job you've got, whatever you're doing in life, God should put you there. How do we, how does this happen? Be led by a voice. Be led by a voice. Get to know that voice. And he says, this is where I want you. Because you're not there to earn a wage. You're there to be a minister of reconciliation. You're there to be got the salt and light. You're there to be like Jesus. And it all comes back to the original pattern to go labor with God. God created a garden. He says, I, I, he could just sustain it himself. He goes, now, I created a man now. You, you take care of it. You work it. Come on. You do this with me, church. It's such a wonderful thing. In verse 19 of Genesis 2, it says, Now the Lord God had formed out of the ground. I love this one. Get this one. Get this one. The Lord God formed out of the ground all the wild animals and all the birds in the sky. Let me ask you a question. Who formed all the animals? Come on, it's not a trick question. Shout it out at me. Who formed all the animals? The Lord God formed all the animals, the wild animals and the birds of the the sky. See, God did something. He planted a garden. He placed mankind into it and said, now work this and look after it. Come on, come and co-labor with me. He created all these animals and all these birds. Wow, God, look what you've done. And then he could have just named them and we go on with our life. But listen to what it says. God then brought them to the man to see what the man would name them and whatever the man called each living creature, that was its name. If that's not co-laboring with God, what is? There is? He says, I entrust you to call a thing what it will be forever and ever. That's a big deal. When God calls you to work alongside that difficult co-worker and he has planted you there, then I want to tell you that God created that person for a relationship. Can I hear an Amen. There is no person that was created for anything but relationship with God. Are are you with me, church? So God says, if you will only but see through my eyes, then you can actually speak into their lives, be it to them or prayerfully, and actually set them up for who God intended them to be. This is what God's calling us back to in Jesus' name. Number three under this. We were created to reproduce God's image on earth. We're created to be led by a voice, not to live under law. 
We were created to co-labor with God, not just to have a job. And we were created to reproduce, represent God's image on this earth. From the very beginning, you can read in Genesis 1, 26, 27, 28. You know this story. God created, let us make mankind in our, in our, in our image and in our likeness, in our form, with our DNA, with our heart. Come on, church. With our characteristics on earth as in heaven. Come on. Even that, the Lord's Prayer, that started back at creation, on earth as in heaven, in our image, in our likeness. The animals weren't created in the image of God. The birds weren't. The trees weren't. Come on. The fish weren't. The birds weren't. None of them were created in the image of God. But then God said, I'm going to create mankind in my image and in my likeness. So he created them, male and female. Can I just say for the record, there are two genders. It's male and female. Hallelujah. There hasn't been any made since. God made male and God made field female. We got to come back to God's original. What has God declared it to be? What God declared it to be, that's what it is. And I'll shout it loudly in Jesus' name. And God made the male and female. He created them in his image. He created them. Then he said, and it says, God bless them. And God said, now be fruitful and multiply be fruitful and make, multiply. And then he goes on. And I, I, we think that's one thing. And God showed me years ago, there's two different things. It's the spiritual and the natural. The, the multiply, the reproduction is the natural filling of the earth. But being fruitful has got nothing to do with the natural multiplication. What is fruitfulness? Fruitfulness is reproducing what you came from. Come on, John 15, I'm the vine, you're the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. What does that mean? You will bear the fruit of who I am, the fruit of the Spirit, the nature of who you are created in. Come on, this is the original intention of your life. Your significance is not what you do, but who you reproduce. And it's not about natural reproduction. Forget natural children. This is about where you go to people see God. Come on, when you respond, the people see God. When you're in challenging t times in your workplace, the people see God. When everyone else is stressing and fretting and they're talking about redundancy, the people see the peace of God, which goes beyond your understanding. That's fruitfulness. And God says, I'm calling the body of Christ. Back to my original. We are created to be led by a voice. We are created to co labor with God. And we are created to reproduce God's image on the earth. Can I hear an amen? That's the pattern set in the beginning. I want to talk for a few minutes on the pattern set at Pentecost. And I'm giving you like a smorgasbord. Is that a call? And I pray that you'll get it and then you'll go and meditate on this. You're ready, aren't you, man? We're going to feast on this, feast on this. God, I'm not here to take up oxygen in space. I'm here by divine appointment from Almighty God, created on purpose with a purpose. And the purpose is beyond myself. The purpose is actually to represent and reproduce God on this earth. Three things, the pattern said at Pentecost. Praise God. Here's the first one. Wait until you receive the promised Holy Spirit. Any Pentecostals in the house? Come on, don't go quiet on me now. Don't you go shy on me now. You go, but it's not respectful to get excited in church. There is a lie from the pit of hell, and I hate it, and I'll call it out. Because, come on, the Bible says in the presence of the Lord there is fullness of joy. We have actually bought into a lie of oppression that says it's respectful just to be quiet. Make a joyful noise, make a loud noise, rejoice and sing praises. David says, I'll become even more undignified than this. It is not about, it is not about getting into the flesh, but it is not about, it's about not stepping into the spirit because we remain in the flesh. Did you hear the word of the Lord right then? Some of us, oh, no, 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 that's not my personality. You were created to praise God. You are created to celebrate God. You are created to get excited about God. It's not a temperament thing. It's what we were created to do. Even if we are silent, the Bible says, even the rocks will cry out and praise God. Mm. Wait until you receive the promised Holy Spirit. Acts 1, verse 4 and 5, Jesus has already been crucified and 
raised up. And this is just before he went back to heaven. And on one occasion, while he was eating with the disciples, he gave them this command. Do not leave Jerusalem, but this is, listen to the word of the Lord. Wait for the gift my father promised. The greatest gift of God is not the gifts from God. It is the gift of God. The promise that he is talking about was not the baptism of the Holy Spirit. It was the Holy Spirit. Come on. Church, this is not semantics. This is a big deal right now. We seek gifts. Come on. Let's seek God. Let's seek the giver of the gifts, not just the gifts from the giver. He says, wait for the gift. He prophesied it. He spoke about it in John. Come on, didn't he say, I'm going to go back to the Father, but don't you worry, I'm going to send you the promised Holy Spirit and he's going to be in you and he's going to lead you into all truth. He'll be your comforter and your counselor. He'll be your sufficiency and your power and your strength. Come on, this is the Holy Ghost. He goes, wait for the gift my Father promised which you've heard me speak about, for John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. You want to know how the church was birthed? It was birthed in wait for the promised Holy Spirit. And God is calling the church back to His original intention for the church. It wasn't to be a nice, quiet, somber, structured, organized organizational place it was to be a place where the holy spirit was present amen the second thing is the promised holy spirit is not just for our enjoyment but he is for our deployment the promised holy spirit is not just for our enjoyment too many christians have made it all about me feeling good me being touched by god me being me 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 isn't that the spirit of the world? Isn't that what, isn't that what Gehazi said? What will you give me when uh, they came to give money to Elisha? And Elisha said, no, nah, he, he went out, chased it. I'll take some of that. What, what, what's Judas saying? What will you give me if I betray him to you? Come on. They give me spirit. They give me spirit. We heard it today in communion. Is we are blessed if we give. It's not, the, it's not the receiving. Give me, give me. What can I give? We need to know the nature of God. God loved the world so much. He gave, he gave, he gave, he gave, he gave. And God says, I'm giving you the promised Holy Spirit. Yes, you'll have fullness of joy. Yes, you'll have a peace. But that's not the primary purpose just for you to enjoy. It's for you to be deployed. Why? Because you're created to co-labor with God. Let's go back to the beginning again. Again, the Spirit is given to anoint us with power. I want to tell you right now in this room today, I ain't got nothing for you, Steve McCracken, but I know the Spirit of God is moving. The Spirit of God is speaking. He was given not just so I can enjoy Him yesterday, but I can be deployed by Him today in the name of Jesus. Acts 1.8. You know it, don't you? Okay, you're up, you preach now. But you will, come on, you will receive what? You will receive? Pamela. You will receive? Come on, don't be intimidated by the devil. Let it out of your mouth. Life and death is in the power of your tongue. Some of you, your freedom is in letting yourself be free. Some of us are living under a lid of constraint and we somehow think it's respectful. Come on. Let's not perpetuate the bondage of slavery to the fear of what people might think. Let's let ourselves be free in the Holy Ghost. You will receive power. The word power, dunamis, is miraculous power. It's not just strength. It's supernatural. But listen to the word of the Lord. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit, the promised Holy Spirit, who is not just for your enjoyment, for, but for your deployment. When he comes upon you, you will receive power and you will be my witnesses. Come on. What is a witness in a court case? A witness is someone who testifies about what they've seen. But do you want to know what the Greek word is? It is the Greek word martyr. It actually is the word where it gets you will lay down your life. When the Holy Ghost comes upon you, the church, God is restoring us to be people that do not fly under the radar. 
We have kicked against the excess of Bible bashing and now we've gone silent. We've gone undercover. We've gone non-offensive. We've gone seeker friendly. We've gone all about, I don't want to upset anyone. And we don't upset anyone and still send them to hell. I want to declare you by the spirit of the living God, we will receive power and we're willing to lay down our life. Jesus laid down his life for us and we're called to lay down our life. You want God to get glorified? Come to the end of yourself. It's no longer I that live, it's Christ that lives in me come on you want to be my disciple deny yourself it's not about what you want take up your cross yes it's going to cost you and follow me where are the followers of Jesus Christ not the followers of the pattern of this world and the things of this world but God declares that God I want it and if God says I'm giving you the promised Holy Spirit and he will give you power why don't we want it Don't throw out truth because of error or imbalance or extremes. Come on, church. Because then we just get into another error and we become lifeless and powerless. I want to declare the church of Jesus Christ is called to be a church of power because we get to the end of ourselves. I've moved past what you think of me. You need to move past what people think of you. We need to come back to the pattern set. The pattern set of the promised Holy Spirit. The promised Holy Spirit is not just for our enjoyment, but it's for our deployment. And here's the last thing I want to say. Is anyone receiving anything from the Word and the Spirit? If you're going, where's my, where's the prophetic? This is it. This is what God's saying to the church right now. This is what God's saying to you. You grab hold of this, life-giving. Here's the last thing I want to say under coming back to the pattern set at Pentecost. Polymerous Holy Spirit, number one. Wait for that. Number two, he's given for your deployment, not just your enjoyment. But here's the next one. Acts 2, as in A-C-T-S, the book of Acts. Acts 2 essentials are greater than 2022 essentials. Acts 2 essentials are greater than 2022 essentials. What do I mean by that? We live in a time where all everyone's saying, what's most important? What do I need to do? What should I do? The, the world is largely in chaos. There's so many things and our focus, even as churches, come on, as Christians, what, what is demanded of right now in the world today? What can I do? What can I not do? Can I come and obliterate that by the power of the Holy Ghost and say, let's get back to Acts 2, essentials. Man, you went quiet. Some of you go, but if I, if I go this, Steve, man, there's persecution. Hello? Hello? In this world, you will have tribulation. Come on. Be a good cheer. I've overcome the world. The world needs us to stand up, church. The world needs us not to have nice meetings on Sunday where we feel good. The the world needs us to be filled and saturated with the Holy Ghost and back into the beginning pattern of being led by a voice. Come on. Being led by a voice, co-laboring with God, reproducing His image, being waiting for the Holy Spirit, being filled to the point of deployment. And I'll read four more verses under Acts 2 Essentials. A lot of people go to the end of Acts 2 for that, the breaking of bread, the prayer. That's not where God led me to. He led me to verse 1, 2, 3, and 4. And here's four essentials. There's more, but this is what God wants us to hear today. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. I need you to hear the word of the Lord. We're almost done. Stay with me here, church. They were all together in one place. It's a redundant statement in the natural. They were all together. That's all you need to say. Or they were all in one place. But what does it say? They're all together in one place. It's the same as in Psalm 133. How good and how pleasant it is when people dwell together in unity. Well, come on. Why are you saying the same thing? And in the Hebrew, in the Psalm 133, the dwell together in unity is the same Hebrew word, which means all together. In other words, when my people are all together, 
all together. Where my people are not just in the same room, but you're in the same spirit. Come on, of one mind, one heart, one accord, and one place. God is saying the first Acts 2 essential is a unity in the spirit. We should not be united around issues. We should be united in the Spirit. Don't fight against issues that are not as important as what the Spirit is wanting to say and do in the church and through the church. Can I hear someone get excited in the Spirit today? Because God is calling us to have a unity in the Spirit. Man, I'm in the Spirit. You're in the Spirit. I can feel, I'm just going to use you as an example. I can feel the unity in the Spirit right now. It's not about volume. It's not about personality. There's, you can connect. You can see when someone's in the Spirit, can't you? And don't you gravitationally pull towards them. Come on, church. God is calling us to be all together, all together. Suddenly. See, that was the catalyst. Go there and wait. So they went there. Come on, get this, get this right now. The Spirit's speaking to me. This is not, not how they waited. If you want to do something, God, go for it. Yeah, cool, I'm ready. That's how we are. God, if you want to bless me, bless me. God, if you want to use me, you can use me. That ain't going to produce the life that God intended. There was a hunger, there's a passion. They were all together in one place. They were all together in one place, in one unity in the Spirit. And then suddenly, everyone say suddenly. Suddenly, a sound like the blowing of a violent wind, I need you to get this, came from heaven hmm, and filled the whole house where they were sitting. Heaven initiated and heaven invades. See, what we do is we initiate and ask God to bless. I mentioned that before. No, when we are all together, together, when there is unity in the Spirit, something came from heaven. We need a lot more something coming from heaven rather than us just looking up and us just asking and us just saying, can you come and do this for me? Can you come and do this for me? Can you come and change that? Can you come and supply that? Can you come and heal that? That's not wrong. But if that's the primary focus of our prayers and needs to shift church, it needs to be God. We are together, together. Why? We don't even know, but God said, you're going to pour out your spirit upon all flesh. So we come together and we're waiting for the promise. And then something starts in heaven and it comes to earth. Let your kingdom come and that your will be done on earth as it's done in heaven. They've got to have a bit more things that's initiated in heaven in our lives. Then what happened? Verse 3. In unity and spirit, heaven initiated and invaded. And then verse 3, they saw, I love this, what seemed to be. <laughs> How ambiguous, ambiguous can you get? Listen to it. They saw what seemed to be. In other words, we don't even know what it was. What was manna? Hebrew. What is this? That's the Hebrew definition of manna. When God did something, what is it? If you can fully explain or contain all that God is doing in your life, God ain't doing enough. It's not that God's not doing enough, we're not tuned in enough. It says here, they saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. Here's the third essential from the book of Acts. The supernatural happens and it's not explainable and it's not containable. We have got to get past trying to explain God fully to ourselves or anyone else. If you can fully explain God and what he's doing, then God's no bigger than you. I don't want to walk with a God like that. I want to walk with a God that when people say, ask me things, I go, I have no idea. He's way bigger than that. Come on. I, I know a little bit. But man, there's endless more. Even Paul, who had an encounter with him, oh, face to face on the road to Damascus, he goes, man, I can all but lost for the surpassing greatness of knowing you. But don't you know him, boy? Yeah, but there's more. There is more. Come on. I pray that you'll have the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you might know him better. There is endless amounts more of God to discover. And part of us, he's going to do stuff that mess up our theology, mess up our comfort zones. Come on, some of us control freaks are going to have to let go. Can I be honest? 
Your run sheets are there to serve a purpose. You're not there to serve them. Your preaching notes are there to serve a purpose. You're not there to serve them. Come on, church. we got to let God be God. Uncontainable. Unexplainable. It seemed to be like tongues of fire. We don't even really know what's happening. What does the Bible says in Proverbs 3? Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Don't lean on your understanding. One of the curses of today, hear me church, is the pursuit of knowledge. The pursuit of knowledge. We pride ourselves these days on what we know. Why don't we start to take a holy spiritual pride in of ourselves on who we know? Let's make it about who we know. Spiritually, not what we know naturally. And the last thing under this, after their unity of spirit, heaven initiated and invaded, the supernatural happened, it wasn't explainable, wasn't containable. Then the last thing is where I want to land today as we finish. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit enabled them. What's that? That's heaven's language becomes our language. Heaven's language becomes our language. Look back on your last week. What came out of your mouth? Was it heaven's language or your language? Was it love or fear? Come on, church. Is my language the language of heaven or just my language? God wants to touch us, fill us. Yes, there's speaking in tongues, there's tongues interpretation, there's prophecy, there's words of knowledge. That's all great. I don't want to land on one of those things right there. I want to land on the fact that all of them are the language of the Spirit. Focus on the language of the Spirit, not just our language. I want to pray for you. Church, if you're able to hang around for the next one, hang around for the next one. Bring just... Receive and saturate again. It might come out the same. It might come out completely different. Who knows what God will do. But I want to tell you to be hungry, hungry, hungry. In the name of Jesus. Would you stand to your feet right now as I pray for you? Hallelujah. Why don't you reach out to heaven? Blessed be the name of the Lord. Father, fill us afresh with the Holy Ghost. Father, I pray right now in the name of Jesus that you will empower this seed of the word of truth, this prophetic declaration, utterance, Lord, to produce the fruit that you desire. I release your blessing, your anointing upon each person. And I pray that this church will go from glory to glory. Lord, as we do all for the glory of God, And we commit today to get back to your original attention. We're going to be led by a voice. Come on, Father. We want to co-labor with you. We want to reproduce your image, Lord. We want to wait for the promised Holy Spirit. We want to be deployed by the promised Holy Spirit, Lord. And we want to get back to the unity in the Spirit, Lord. Something coming from heaven. Oh, God, the supernatural happening, Lord, where we don't have to explain it or contain it, Lord. And that our language becomes the language of heaven. We ask these things in the name of Jesus. Bless every person to be a blessing in Jesus' name. Amen.